Well, hey everybody, this is Bart from The Sound Couple, and today I'm gonna to walk you through the periodic maintenance we do on our cabinets. And today I'll be doing this on our Presona CDL 12s, and there's a couple different things we do in general. And number one, we'll do a physical inspection of the cabinets. We'll make sure the drivers are secured, we'll go around the perimeter, make sure the jacks are tight, and then squirt a little bit of air, just blow out the dust, We'll move on to the sonic part of our testing, and that'll consist of three different elements. Number one is we'll run some music and just take a closer look down with our ear and make sure that everything is sounding good. The other thing we're gonna do is we'll run a polarity test, and this will send a pulse to the cabinets, and we can ensure that there's nothing going on with the wiring, there's nothing loose if everything stays in correct polarity. And then the last thing we do is we'll run a tone generator. And what the tone generator does is allow us to adjust the frequencies of what the cabinets are producing. So we can listen to the crossover point on this cabinet, it's about 420 hertz. And that'll allow us to make a little bit more isolated audio sound and that we can listen to. And so let's dive in because we got a lot to cover. Okay, for the physical exterior maintenance, we are gonna double check all the screws on the back panel. Now, whether your cabinet is a powered cabinet like this one or a passive, they're all gonna have some sort of panel on the back, either for the speaker jacks, and in this case, the input and output jacks as well. It's important to make sure these are snug, not over-tightened, just snug. So they're not rattling when the speaker's being used. This one is really loose. This is always the first thing to check if you're hearing some type of noise, is to make sure all the screws are tight. Moving on to the front of the cabinets, we're gonna to wanna to make sure the screws that are holding the grill are nice and snug as well. But we'll take care of that after we've inspected the drivers. So for right now, we're just gonna get these screws off and then once we put them back on, they'll be snug because we'll have made sure they are. Let's get this grill off. Now, sometimes these will come off really easy like the last one. Other times they can get a, stuck on there a little bit. And typically what I'll do is just kind of bang it. It's popping loose. Oh, almost. There we go. These grills can have a little bit of glue or a little bit of padding that can get, oh, I forgot one screw here, that can hold it down a little bit. And so I just take it easy. And gently pull. Top one there is, seems to be Stuck on there pretty good. A little bit surprised it's being so difficult. There we go. Okay, now we got the grill off. We can do a little bit closer inspection of the cabinet. And I'm just looking for anything. I don't want to touch these. And so I'm just looking for any visual indicators of a problem, like a tear or anything else that looks like it could be a problem. And everything here to me looks good. Another thing to check is the dust cone cap. Sometimes these, if they get loose, they can buzz and rattle. And you're thinking that the speaker's bad, but it's just the loose dust cap. In this case, the dust cap looks nice and solid doesn't feel like it's it's loose at all. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some compressed air to just blow out some of the dust here. Now I'm gonna caution you. I'm using compressed air out of an air compressor. I got it turned way down, and I'm gonna do it from a distance. 
And perhaps I'd recommend using compressed air out of the can instead, but you just don't want to make sure you blast the drivers at all. These aren't that bad, but... I would stick to dry cloth as, as much as you, as you can. And in here, there's nothing that the dust is going to harm, but you definitely do not want to be putting any type of wet chemicals or even water. You can wipe, wipe them down. And again, our cabinets are very clean. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that everything is tight. The key here is snug. Not tight, tight. I'm going around to make sure that this driver is, is looking good. Okay, there's some mounting brackets up here. I'm gonna make sure the mounting brackets are snug. Those are actually Kind of loose, so it's a good thing we're checking those. Now I'm going to check the mid-high drivers. Gone through the cabinet, made sure all the screws are nice and snug, and that the speakers are going to be secure. The next thing we're going to do is turn off the DSP. Okay, to prepare for the audio portion of our testing and maintenance, I'm going to disengage any of the DSP settings that we have enabled. In this case, it's the compressor and the high pass filter. And depending on what kind of speakers you have and how you do that, sometimes it'll be controls on the back. If they're passive speakers, nothing you have to worry about. But just to make sure that we're testing the full speaker at a flat response, we just want to make sure that the settings we have engaged are not interfering with the test. This cabinet sounds good. This one's a little bit unique because it has the eight two inch drivers. So there's a lot of sound happening in a small space here. So I was listening to each one of these and I was able to hear nice audio out of them all. Next, we're gonna move on and perform a polarity test using our Galaxy Audio Cricut. What this will do is ensure that the polarity of the speakers are still in line. I don't expect anything to change, but in case any type of wiring got bumped or there's like wires touching each other inside the cabinet, this will just verify that the polarity is correct. We'll perform an additional test with the mid-high range drivers, and I will lightly touch each driver, and I should feel the pulse of this unit. As long as it stays green, we're good. Okay, everything checked out as I fully expected. Next, I'm gonna check each of the mid-range drivers and I'm gonna carefully put my finger on each one and I'm gonna feel it pulsing. Okay, great. We're looking really good. The 
cabinet, all the mid-range high drivers are fully functional along with the 12 inch and they sound good too. It's good to do multiple tests because sometimes it can sound good with the music, but you run some other tests and you can discover issues you weren't hearing with the previous test. For our next test, we're gonna use a tone generator and send some frequencies through the cabinets to see how they respond. We're gonna start out at about 40 Hertz. So it'll be the 12 inch driver here that's just seeing that frequency. And then we'll bring it up. Well, once we listen to that, we'll play with that for a minute. And then we'll bring it up and cross the threshold point of 420 Hertz so we can listen to these drivers here, make sure they sound good. And if that checks out, then that's just another confirmation that this cabinet is working as we would expect it to. We'll bring up low 40. Now we're just listening for any types of abnormal shakes, rattles. I can feel the air really moving out of the ports here. Okay, let's bring it up a little bit. The frequency that is. right here all that sounds good we'll just keep going up a little ways Okay, I'm gonna give this cabinet a thumbs up. Before I put these on here, I just, I blew these out with air and I wiped them down so they're nice and cleaned up. And we're gonna start putting the screws in. One tip that I'm gonna give is that taking the screws out, I use the driver and that's okay. Putting them back in, you gotta be careful. I've seen some people use the drivers, the battery ones, and, and, I, and I do too. But go slow and don't over tighten these because you'll end up stripping them out. If you do end up stripping them out, over here this is wood, this is plastic. I'm not sure what we do about that. And the wood, there's plenty of videos out there what to do if you strip out wood. You can put some wood glue in there with toothpicks and that is a really good technique. I would recommend doing this by hand. As we're moving on to the second side, I just wanted to point out that the stripping of these screws, it's not specific to these cabinets. That's something I've experienced on different manufacturers cabinets. And even if you're careful, stripping out a screw is always a possibility. And it's kind of a bummer. Something I hate doing, but it's just part of life and the trade-off. I'm a firm believer that maintenance is the key to longevity. And wondering if your cabinets are working, or any gear you have for that matter, you got to change the oil on it, so to speak. So when you're going to these gigs, your gear is performing to its best ability. And more importantly, you know that it is because you've taken the time to check that it is. If you're just showing up to every gig, that's the only time you listen or use your gear, you could be missing out on either catching things that become even a bigger problem, or you're not using your gear to its full potential because stuff isn't working and you don't know about it. Plus, it's just good to know how to take things apart. Last but not least, the 
center cover. But of course, these take a different size bit. Well, okay, we are nearly done with this cabinet. I'm gonna turn the DSP back on and we'll play some music, do a final check. That's checking out. And then we'll just do a little bit of a wipe down this thing is very clean. Maybe just uh, a little bit back here on the, on the fins, the cooling fins. Nope. Actually, that's important too. That's dust buildup on here is it's not good in the sense that doesn't allow the cabinet to cool as efficiently. So keeping these clean is a good idea. Other than that, cabinet is very, very well maintained. Okay, next we're moving on to the subs. So let's get this cover off. See it wanting to kind of break here, but not too nicely. I think what we're going to try to do is set the cabinet down and see if we can get it off. I think it'll come off with this. I just got a little piece of wire and I put a hook in it. We'll just hook that around. We'll start tugging and hopefully this will. There we go. There. Well, let's see what we have. And I see where we've had some water or other materials splash on these things, so we'll gently wipe those down a little bit, but Overall, not as bad as I was thinking. As long as we got the speaker on the side, we'll check the back connections and then I'll flip the cabinet up and we'll look at the rest of it. Okay, we're checking the back plate here. We're doing exactly what we did on the other cabinets, making sure the plate is secured. In addition to that, we do have the caster plates here. This is something else that could rattle, cause unnecessary noise when you're using the cabinets. So double checking these, making sure they're tight. Okay, I'm gonna stand the cabinet back up and let's take a look at the speaker itself. Well, overall, things don't look too bad. There's a little bit of dirt in here. The speaker visually looks okay. I don't see any tears or any physical damage. We'll take a Phillips and just go around, make sure that nothing is loose. This feels real tight. Man, they must really crank these down way tighter than I would. Okay, that feels good. Next, we'll take some air, gently blow it out. OK, 
Okay. Let's check this dust cap. That looks good. The speaker's not making any noise when it's moving. That's good. Sometimes if a speaker's bad and you and you flex it a little bit, you'll hear kind of a scratching sound. I got a dry cloth here. And actually just wiping that around the cabinet here a little bit, that is taking those little water stains right off. There we go, looks much better. We're gonna run the same series of tests, starting with just some music and taking a listen for, to the speaker. sounds pretty good. I don't hear any issues with it. And as expected, that checks out as well. With the DSP turned off, we're going to send a tone through the speaker and we're going to start real low at about 30 hertz. Bring it up a little bit. Okay, the cabinet sounds good. I don't hear any buzzing, rattling, any type of an anomaly coming from the cabinet. We're gonna run one more test after this, and if it gets through that, I think this cabinet will get the thumbs up as well. I'm gonna actually run some kick drum through it, and I'm gonna do that via a recording from a gig with the kick drum soloed, and we're just gonna watch and listen to the cabinet. We wanna make sure that the cabinet's pushing out, That'll confirm that the polarity is actually absolutely correct, and we're gonna be able to listen to it. And this will be good because this is what a sub does. It reproduces that low end punch from the kick drum. This is, will be a good test for us to hear it without any of the other instruments or noise that's associated with a gig. Sounding good. I see the speaker coming up out that's good all the movement around the surrounds look good plenty of air pushing out of the ports I'm looking visually around the speaker making sure there's no nothing warped or but it all looks like it's moving together hear any extra noises, extra rattles, anything like that. So with that, I'm going to give this cabinet a thumbs up and we're going to button it back up.
Well, that is a wrap on the speaker maintenance that we perform on our cabin. It's about every two to three years. But more importantly, we are looking at them at each gig and addressing any problems that we see prior to the maintenance period. For these, we haven't had any issues with them whatsoever, and today confirmed that we'll continue to have no issues moving forward. So I hope this was helpful. I hope maybe you learned something. I'm sure there are other things we could have done. The most important thing for us is to just make sure that they look good, that we clean them up, we blow the dust out, we listen to them in an isolated environment. Take the time. This is a lot of work, I'll be honest, for us to go through all of our cabinets, but it's a process we do during the slower times of the year. As always, everybody, we would love to hear your thoughts and ideas of what you saw or the things you do when it comes to speaker maintenance. So with that, everyone, we're gonna see you at the next gig.